Bonjour, so we are back in Sunset Valley for part two of uh, renovation. It's land grab estate, and yeah, so it's part two. I've done the exterior and some of the interior, and so for today's episode, it's going to be well. First, I'm going to tackle the layout. I think go back, distribute a bit more the the rooms so that I know which one goes where, and. Also, makeover of the family, so three members, and yep, I think. Oh, and I might add a few more things in in the garden. Not sure yet. We'll see. But yeah, rearrange a few things to make the whole house ready for download. Okay, so that's the plan. Let's get to it. So first thing first, I went back to. Adjusting the, the, the layout inside, I worked a bit more on it, uh, made the passageways between the dining room and the kitchen a bit uh, larger. There is more room to navigate there, and I also wasn't sure about that first, uh, but then downstairs I uh, did two small half bathrooms. Well, not, not, not that small, but two half bathrooms uh, behind the staircase. At first I was thinking maybe only one bathroom, um, because there were two in the original build. Um, didn't see really the, the use of having two, but then it's a big house and one of the bathrooms opens onto one side and the other one onto the other side, so why not have two bathrooms there, as uh, it echoes somewhat the, the original uh, layout there. So, um, the family, meaning the families who, uh, as I said, I didn't really know them, so didn't get to really know them any better. <laughs> and that wasn't that m much more detail about them in their bios and uh, their favorites that, uh, that gave more ideas and yeah, I, I ended up thinking that it was an ambitious mom and the daddy sounds sweet and baby boy sounds a bit torn up between the two <laughs> from what I've read. So I had the most difficulties with his uh, bedroom actually. I didn't really know what theme to go with there. So then I really started on the interior for the design there. So started with that whole wing, the right wing of the house, where there are the, the living areas, so I'm calling them like that because it's down in the description, formal and informal living areas, I think, something like that. And the idea there, so I did the sunken uh, driving room, and the two other rooms that were studies, but very similar ones, I turned into two different um, activity rooms. Uh, so one of them is more of a TV lounge <laughs> and the other one, is, and at first I had put the pool table there, but then I remembered I had, uh, there is a pool table just uh, across the street in the, in the country club there, in the golf course uh, club that is over there. And so I replaced the pool table with uh, uh, the mm, the, board, the shuffleboard, isn't it? The shuffleboard table, I think it's called something like that. And to uh, and put some bookcases there to to as a callback, somewhat of, of of what was there in the original version. So here, doing the sunken drawing room, I've put a piano there, a bar. And there is a chessboard. It's not the same that uh, was there, but it's the same idea. <laughs> chessboard there, and it's more of a formal drawing room, a formal living area here. So for the walls and also the general vibe of the of the interior of, of the interior of that house, what with countryside, chic countryside <laughs> with apparent beams and dark woods that contrast nicely with the, the 
light tint of the on the walls. Then some old uh, pieces of furniture. So uh, there are those what robes, what robes I've put from Supernatural. I've put them in almost all the rooms because they are uh, uh, very stately looking, I think, and at the same time could be see it as quite useful, you know, to put away things and to have closets everywhere in, in an old house that doesn't have building closets. Which is a bit of a pity because I think for these, this type of houses uh, there could be items where you know, we are pretending that it's a closet in the wall and oh you know a sort of dumbware like with a pretend shaft going from from one uh, floor to the other that would have been cool <laughs> but so instead of uh, used pieces of furniture I thought would look as if they are part of the house that the house um, no. yeah they could have been like for instance this a bookcase that are actually different bookshelves put together and try to make it look as if it's only one big piece that was built in, in not really inside the wall but with the wall I don't know it kind of looked right to me to have it there so that's why I put it there trying to explain something that I don't really have an explanation <laughs> it looked like for the, the, the bookshelf there and the tall one, uh, same thing, and same thing for the seating area under the window. Um, yeah, but something that look as if the, it, it's going to to come with the house uh, if they move. Uh, the the current owners moved out and new ones arrive. Those pieces are still going to be there. Well, not really, because it doesn't work like that in The Sims, but, well, anyway, <laughs> then there is the formal dining. I don't know what I've called it, the formal dining. It's, there is only one dining room, uh, but, oh, they, they could potentially eat in the kitchen too, so. So here I did a bit like for the Alto family, I put a um, couple of buffet tables and uh, so the, the ones from the resort so that they, they can get something to eat without going in the kitchen and, and have to cook something. So, so if they don't hire a cook to work for them, at least they can have a semi-automated <laughs> system to get food without having to cook. Um, so yeah, th that's the idea there. So in this dining room, there is also a food I've made here. I've made uh, a piece of furniture, but uh, I wanted something more bulky to have a big sideboard. And a bit later, I, I think I do a second one, but I think it might be even way later. Um, yeah, I wanted big pieces there to, to have not exactly antiques, Oh, you know what? Let's go with antiques because, like, pieces with history, something like that. So, so that's why I try to to have bulkier pieces of furniture there. So then the the kitchen. So it did the same thing that I that I done for the drawing room with the the beams, apparent beams there, since it's a second floor to have. I had actually a, a floor above uh, I could work with and also that at that moment I did also a basement I wasn't sure before but then I was thinking that I needed a laundry room and so that's why I added a circular staircase in the kitchen to um, lead to the basement just below that is about the basement is a bit smaller than the kitchen I think and there is um, a nectar cellar there and a laundry and also a small toilet on the side and uh, yeah so that's just i'm going to title it just after i'm doing the kitchen which is big 
and I tried to do different areas. Uh, so it's 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 as big or are almost as big as the drawing room. Uh, I made the passageway a tad bigger. One of them at least is a tad bigger. So so there is like one or two tile less than in the drawing room. And uh, I've put a table on the on the side but no chairs around it because more like a um, sort of a workbench. <laughs> I've, um, I've put a rug, but it's, it's so that it's a pretend do that they're working on because there is not that much color to work with uh, here, and it's always the same. So I'm reusing the same pieces again and again and trying to do something different. And here, it's such a big kitchen, it's calling for for more clutter. <laughs> uh, I did what I could there. Uh, then the basement. So there is that nectar cellar in the, in the back, and then there is a small, uh, not that small, uh, laundry room where there are. I think I've put only one washing machine, maybe two. There might be two washing machines and two dryers there. There is um, a clothesline outside near the stable, so they can also have that option to have the laundry dry outside. And in the in that laundry room, oh yeah, I put it. <laughs> so it, it looks a bit weird. The same thing. I, w I was looking for more clutter, and I. I did something with a shelf so that it looked a bit like an ironing board but it doesn't really look like it but that's why there is that shell here. Anyway, so then back above the surface and in, in the hallway so here was uh, I tried to keep the, the pattern that was there but the marble floor was a bit much for me for that type of house and so I went with mm, a more wooden look there, uh, with bronze. I tried to incorporate a hamper, laundry hamper, a bit everywhere because you don't want the seams to when they when they switch to their to their uh, for instance outerwear before going outside. You don't want piles of dirty laundry. Uh, being sprayed up everywhere in, in the hallway is very, very bizarre for such a big house too. And so that's why I usually try to have hampers hidden here and there. But uh, again, it's not that easy when you don't have a CC. You don't, you CC. There is a very cool one that is incorporated, a piece of CC that is incorporated. Um, the, the laundry basket is inside um, a big... Well, not that big, but it's a, a cabinet, a sort of a wardrobe-looking piece that can go a bit everywhere because it can be customized. So it fits in very nicely with a whole array of different rooms, and I miss it <laughs> very, very dearly there. So the men ensuite. Uh, uh, what's going on with this one? Oh yeah, the layout in that that part, in that wing on the second floor, was a bit more difficult to work with because so the fireplace, the chimneys now smack dab in the middle of the of the wing of the building, and so the corridor cannot go there. I mean, it can it can go there, but then has to be to turn around, you know. That you, you cannot have a corridor in the middle uh, and different rooms opening onto it. So I had to work with that and have that main bedroom be... It's not really L-shaped, somewhat L-shaped, but yeah, the bathroom, I wanted it to be attached to the, the bedroom. And then there is a guest bedroom near it. And I really wanted that guest bedroom to have also its own ensuite bathroom and to do that had to have them be that way, 
didn't have another option so that the corridor that you can see here it's uh, it is uh, L-shaped for this one for sure but yeah then had to have that have it that way because of the fireplace and had to keep the fireplace uh, was a big feature so it wasn't it wasn't in the bedroom it wasn't in the in the original bathroom uh, but I would have kept it in the bathroom if there was also one in the bedroom but since there was only one on that side and in the description there are four fireplaces so I couldn't add more so that's why I put it in the bedroom instead of the bathroom another thing I've changed is that the bedrooms were more to um, on the front side of the building and here I really wanted them to have a view on, on the on the ocean that is in the on the back in the back of the building so I had them on the other side and each has its own balcony so there are four bedrooms there each has its own bathroom and uh, a view on the ocean and a fake balcony because there is no real access to it so on the other wing I did two bedrooms so there is going to be the nursery that is going to be a big one and then I had room for another one and I was thinking that since it's a very wealthy family they might have either a nanny a live-in nanny or an au pair but then I haven't customized it much because I'm I don't know who is going to live there <laughs> I don't know the, the the sim living there uh, not that it was easier for the sims I did know uh, then Malcolm's bedroom was oof, <laughs> it wasn't easy to do so here this is the access to the attic so there is a staircase and a few um, items I've put there for the for the staff to to it's more of a storage area but I didn't call it that I wasn't sure what, what to call it I think I might have put uh, I had that idea of having the there is a, a trash chute uh, and it was a bit I went with it with the idea of the the dumb weather um, but I only put one I think because at first I, I was thinking of putting different ones at different different areas of the, the house and to have them in a logical way like one on top of the other you know one on one floor and the other one just below on this on the, the lower floor so that there is a pretend shaft uh, linking the two and yeah no no I haven't done that actually because I was thinking that they're going to use it um, to to throw away the trash and wasn't sure if it would, would cause routing issue because of that I, I wasn't sure so I haven't done, done that but I might I might add um, if I have time to play test a bit more thoroughly I might, I might try and see how it goes with it so um, the nursery the Malcolm's uh, Malcolm's bedroom um, hesitated putting two beds there but instead I've put only one and a long couch I was thinking that someone can sleep on there or take a nap on there if need be and it can be replaced by another bed but there is a, a playroom area and uh, more of a sleeping corner let's say <laughs> and small ba uh, bathroom uh, attached to it there, there is uh, a fireplace there too and for the theme I went with a mix of dragons and dinosaurs <laughs> to, uh, the, the color scheme the main color scheme is yellow because it's favorite color but yeah I wasn't sure what really what to do with it so it's not the most customized uh, bedroom ever <laughs> but that hints of uh, I suppose what he likes but wasn't is is isn't it ambitious I think how do you work with that he has a laptop I've kept it I think uh, in his bedroom thinking in that month he might work with it but he's such a young boy so I don't know so then the double decker library um, was fun this one uh, so it's um, there is that part here where I've put a telescope, uh, two desks, um, 
a few, I think there are two laptops there too, and uh, what else? There are, there are chairs, or they can sit down if they want to read. Then in the attic part of that library, uh, more bookcases, and there is also another desk, and two um, f uh, bookcases that are also sliding doors, so you know, from Supernatural. And one of them leads to to the uh, domestics uh, quarters, and the other one to the to the attic. So it's a hidden attic there. So then, just below the library, it's a sunroom. I'm calling it that, but uh, yeah, it's there are not that many windows actually. So it's it wasn't a room before. It was a, uh, the beginning of the patio, and. Uh, of closet and made a room and uh, that's where I was thinking of more a tea room but I don't have the well I do but I'm not using star items so I, I'm not using the the table with the tea set and that was the idea that so instead I've put a um, buffet and a, a hot beverage machine and uh, oh, also the domino, domino table uh, there because they kind of have fun together and gather around the same table, so same idea. And then I did the two uh, half bathrooms that are uh, behind the staircase, so they are pretty similar, but uh, each one opens onto a different corridor, so uh, can get to the closest one. <laughs> And then the attic, so mostly I've done the area for above uh, where the staircase here is. Um, that area is for the staff uh, quarters, the domestics uh, quarters. Uh, so two bedrooms, two small bedrooms, and a bathroom and a small living area there. And then on the other side, I did it a bit later. I've put items in a, in a, in, a, in an attic, a few items, mostly for cats, I think. So one of the of the bedrooms I, I'm doing right now, I've put a theme for horses. <laughs> so I was thinking that maybe the person in charge, the staff member in charge of uh, taking care of the horse, and the other one. I was thinking maybe more for the cook and put things for a cat person. <laughs> so now yeah, a few um, posters and also the items for a cat. And then when I did the attic, the other area, uh, the hidden area, I put items for a cat also there, to, so a cat can have fun there. Uh, because I uh, was running out of ideas of <laughs> what else to have in the house. So they can actually have the three different types of animals, of, uh, playable animals there in the house. Okay, so a few more details and then off to the tour.
So, overview of the house with the first floor first, so the main entrance is there with the hallway, then here the dining room, and access here to the kitchen over there, so it's actually on the ground floor. The staircase here, circular staircase, leads to the basement here, the hallway, a small half bathroom here, the laundry, and then the nectar cellar here. Back upstairs with an access here to the backyard, the sunroom, the two small half bathrooms, and then a first living area with a shuffleboard, the drawing room here, a second living area, a third, I don't know, <laughs> and then back to the staircase. The second floor with the corridor leading to the main bedroom here, the ensuite bathroom, guest bedroom, ensuite bathroom here, then on to the second wing, the other wing of the building with the Opus bedroom and uh, ensuite bathroom, the nursery, the Malcolm's bedroom, which is big with a smaller bathroom, and then access to the attic over there with the staffed uh, corner. We'll see it later. The library is there, and there is a ladder leading to the second floor of the library, which is on the third floor. Uh, with that. So the ladder is over there a few seating areas, a desk, and then a sliding door here with the hidden attic over there. So it's accessible uh, through that door. And then another sliding door there that goes to the hallway and there is also access there through that circular staircase, the bathroom and the two bedrooms for the staff. So including the, the caretaker's house, uh, there are uh, now, uh, there is room for four um, members of staff, plus the four uh, bedrooms, the four uh, bedrooms for the family. So that's it for that area, that uh, whole area is done. And uh, for that video, I'll see you in the next one. A bientôt! <laughs>